Hello everybody, I am Dr. Brian O'Neill and I am going to introduce the topics for looking at stream discharge and flow duration curves here. So this will be your assignment basically um, for the week of October 12th through the 18th and just remember that on on that 18th at 11.59 p.m. that is when the the full assignment is due. And FYI, this t assignment does take a while. You can't just get it done, um, you know, in an hour. It, it'll take probably a couple hours to get done. So please leave yourself time um, to get everything done. But so I wanted to talk about stream discharge. Okay, when we talk about stream discharge, what we're well, I should let's back up a little bit. When we think about a stream and water flowing down a stream, um, we have this thing called the flow regime. It's basically the natural pattern of flow over a, a large time frame. Okay, and there's different ways to think about that. We can think about how much water is flowing, the magnitude of that flow, um, how that flow then changes okay so variability of flow uh, when does it flood how often does it flood how long does the flood last when in the time of the year does that flood happen and how fast does that flood actually like happen or go away then another thing we can think about when we're thinking about when we're talking about flow regime is base flow so you know basically what's the minimum level of a river that you would expect on any given year or you know even with a, a larger time frame and then you know the the final thing is how often do we have extreme events right so what is an extreme event well that could be a big flood in a stream or it could be you know prolonged dry period or just just a single dry period might be extreme enough especially if we're talking about the you know a fish that's in a stream or something that isn't going to be able to survive in that situation now there's a whole lot of stuff to um, figure out what the flow regime is when there's a lot of research that goes into thinking about a specific river and its flow regime um, and the reason is because native species are adapted to the natural flow regime okay so basically whenever we go in and put a dam on a river put levees on a river we're changing how the water is flowing down that river changing the conditions of the habitat such that the native species that were there have to either adapt change or um, or they just get extirpated out of the system right so um, and it's not just that like the individual fish is adapted to a certain spot it could be the whole life cycle of the fish the fish might need a certain flood in the springtime so its eggs can get distributed or or something um, something like that where um, the organisms themselves their aspects of their whole life cycle need certain types of either floods or dry periods or something for that organism to work out to be successful in that sy system so um, if we go back here, when we're thinking about flow regime, this is like, you know, a long time scale kind of thing. But to, before we can even figure out what the times, the long time frame is, we need to figure out about what stream discharge is. So it's basically like the flow at a slice in time. Okay. So how much water is flowing down a given stream right now? Or, um, so there's different ways to measure this. Think about this little stream you have here, right? Um, what stream discharge is, is it's a volume per time, okay? So um, it's, it's abbreviated Q for discharge, um, and it's usually measured in cubic meters per second, okay? So if you think about it, what you could do is take a bucket, okay, since we're thinking in cubic meters, take a cubic meter bucket. So that's about, you know, three feet by three feet by three feet. 
um, that's a, you know, a big bucket, um, and put that bucket right here, okay? And then you essentially time how long it takes to fill it up, and then, um, you know, you, you have one cubic meter divided by the number of seconds it took to fill it up, and that's how you could get cubic meters per second. Now, that's great if you have this dam here, it's called a weir, um, where you have this nice little spigot, right, where all the water is flowing down into your little bucket here. Um, but in a normal stream or a big river, you simply cannot do that. So what you have to do is figure out the area of the stream, okay? Now in this really simplified example, we have the average depth is two meters, the average width is four meters, so the area would then be, um, uh, eight, cube, uh, 8 squared meters, right? Um, and water then moves here in this example at uh, 2 meters in one second, so it's 2 meters per second. Now that is actually very fast water. Um, you would only find that in an extremely large river, not in a small stream that was only 4 meters wide. But, um, you know, the math is pretty simple here. You would take 2 meters per second times eight square meters and you would get 16 cubic meters per second. Okay. Um, now that's assuming that this is like just like a straight pipe where you don't have any faster or slowing moving water. But think about, you know, a stream that looks like this, okay, where you have a deeper section over here. And you know from going and looking at a stream, the water flows slower over at the sides than it does in the middle. So what you can do is um, to get this discharge equals area times velocity, um, you don't just measure velocity right in the middle. You basically break your stream channel into a bunch of different sections and then you find the area of this section, the area of this section, the area of this section, all the way through. And then you multiply that times the water velocity, but you have to measure the water velocity at each individual section here. So you essentially get a tiny little discharge of how much water is flowing here per second, here per second, here per second, and so forth all the way through. So this then is the worksheet that you'll be working with. Um, and what I want to do is kind of go through it a little bit so you have a, you can orient yourself. Here, let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So um, what we're going to be doing here, this is basically what I was talking about. And what we've got is a stream that is going to be split up into 10 different sections. Now we obviously can't you know, measure stream velocity um, over a video, but essentially what we're doing is going to have data here. So this is going to be the width of your individual section in centimeters, and then the depth of your individual section. So you've got 10 sections, so think of you know this here column as this little area over here. So you've got 14 centimeters wide, 4 centimeters deep. So the area is just a rect um, you know, 14 times 4 to get that rectangular area. Multiply it times then your stream velocity. That's the velocity of the water in that individual section. Now realize that this is in centimeters. The area will be in centimeters squared. So you have to convert these um, all into meters. Um, make sure everything isn't just in in meters so that your final um, calculation can be in cubic meters per second because that um, is a problem and won't uh, it won't work without that. So basically then you add up all of these numbers, right? So you find the individual areas of these, multiply it times your velocities and you get your discharges, sum all of these up, and that is your total discharge. Okay, so let's switch back to the PowerPoint because I want to talk a little bit about a different way to think about um, displaying your data, displaying your um, stream discharge data. 
Now, uh, what we'll be building then with um, some data that you'll be downloading from the internet is what's called a flow duration curve, okay? And what it essentially is, is it's a way to visualize long-term flow. Okay, how does the f discharge of the river change over 20 years? We're going to be doing it with 20 years. Okay, so if you look at the x axis here, it's percentage exceedance, and this is like the number of days or uh, the percentage of times that a stream is at or higher than that discharge. Okay. So, I have an example here, 60% um, of the time flow is greater than 1.3 meters, cubic meters per second. Okay, let's go back to that. So 60% of the time, when you go up here, it's at, and then you go over here, 1.3 cubic meters per second. Okay. So what, what this graph is actually useful for is, say you're making a hydropower dam, okay? And you're making this dam and you need a certain amount of water to flow through this, um, to th flow through your turbines to actually like spin it and make enough energy that it's worthwhile to make this dam. So let's say you need, um, two and a half cubic meters per second flowing down this river to make your hydropower dam worthwhile. Given this flow duration curve, is that is this a worthwhile place to do that? It, would this flow duration curve of this river, so would this river be a good place to put this dam if you need two and a half cubic meters per second? So look at two and a half cu cubic meters and what do you find go down somewhere around like 28 percent so what's that that's saying is 28 percent of the time the river is at two and a half cubic meters per second so okay do you only want do you want your hydropower dam to only be working 28 percent of the time and the answer is probably not right so these type of graphs can really help um, give us a big picture idea, a long-term idea of what's going on in that river. And what we see is when we build these, these things, um, you get um, different type of like curves for each different type of stream. Okay, so, um, you know, these are example, this is, this right here would have really high flows for really only short periods of time, right? Because by the time you get out here, 20%, it means, um, you know, 20% of the time the river is flooding or let, let, let's say the, the flood value is somewhere right in here. So this is, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20% of the time of the river is actually only flooding, whereas most of the time the river is actually relatively um, low, low discharge. Here, a groundwater stream is kind of the opposite of that, where you have um, a relatively stable flow throughout the entirety of the 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 time, uh, the the twenty years or whatever your data is going here, and it doesn't really change that much. Discharge doesn't change that much. And here you might have a snowmelt stream where you have a really long time where the, the, it floods and it takes a long time. The, the, the gradual curve here is showing that it takes a long time for that flood to essentially go away. So when um, what we're going to be doing in our worksheet here is basically creating flow duration curves for two rivers in the United States. Okay, and you'll be creating one of these things here. Uh, notice that your uh, the data you'll be downloading will be you be in cubic feet per second, but we're going to want cubic meters per second over here. Um, so basically, what you're going to be doing is going to this website right here, uh, https://waterdata.usgs.gov. 
bunch of other letters too. But what's happening there is that's the USGS, US Geological Survey's uh, portal for finding um, a bunch of, it's a national database where uh, stream gauges run by the USGS, all their data goes there and you can use those data to create these, um, to, to figure out basically the level of water at any at lots and lots of rivers across the United States. Um, so kind of choose two streams from different areas of the of of the United States kind of makes for some interesting differences that you can see. Um, FYI it might take a while to find a river that has 20 years of data um, so just make sure you know you probably use bigger rivers it, it, it will work better. Okay, so what I'm going to want you to do is um, go to this, follow these directions here. They're pretty explicit directions that have pretty much every step that you're going to need. Um, but you're going to select time series daily data. Um, and what you're going to do is basically um, choose from 19, January 1st, 1998 to um, December 31st 2018. Now the reason I have you use those dates is it sometimes takes a while for these data to be like proofed and I know that all the data for twin at least until 2018 will be inputted on this site so so it should be good. Um, basically you're gonna be doing a bunch of stuff I have in Excel to manipulate all these data um, and there's gonna be some um, formulas that you're going to have to do that will be um, a little bit confusing. Uh, one thing I would say is make sure you have a little bit of hard drive space because you're going to have an Excel sheet with 7, 000, over 7,000 points um, of, of data and that's going to be a lot. Um, if your computer does crash, um, kind of copying and pasting that much data, uh, I would try it again, close everything else, um, it, it might work. Uh, but follow these directions and what you're going to be doing is you should have some sort of, if you follow these directions correctly, you should have some sort of flow curve that is high on the top left and bottom on the top right, right? So we the reason that it, it is that shaped is because we know that you know at a hundred percent of the time what that means is the river is always higher than the lowest flow that has ever been recorded in your 20 um, years worth of data okay so you should have you know the highest floods appear the lowest time the river has been over here and um, so feel free to ask me questions, email me, um, might have to talk on the phone to try to get your issue figured out, but we should be able to um, work something out. Okay, get to it. Remember that this assignment is due October 18th at 11.59 p.m.